More oh, there we go. Is it working now? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. I'd like to take a moment to welcome everybody here. Uh, thanks for showing up. When um, when Elena told me that she wanted to have a birthday party for her 90th birthday, we, we sat down to plan it. And I said, well, Mom, how, how many people would you like to invite? And she said, 175. <laughs> <laughs> so um, here we all are. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. Um, you know, my, uh, our, our father died uh, in the late 80s. And, um, and when my mom decided to move to Clovis, in 1992, but of course we were all concerned, uh, and it's just such a pleasure to see the community that she has here, and you're all part of that. We appreciate that very much, and and frankly, it's just so great that she's living here on her own, independently, at 90 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite. Not quite. So you've got to make it to 90. Uh, but uh, no, this is this is great. It's great to see all of you uh, to to celebrate this day. We're happy to be here. I don't know whether you've noticed, but we do have some pictures playing on. Uh, you can see them on the uh, TV screen above the door. Gonna really cover, cover uh, going back to you know her childhood and uh, her marriage and her father and other parts of her life right up until you know, very recently. So um, if you get a chance to look at some of those pictures, that, that would be uh, I think you might find some of it interesting. So please do. And uh, again, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm going to, uh, maybe we should make a toast. I didn't bring a glass up here, but I was gonna toast, say let's have a toast to Elena's birthday. So, let's raise a glass. And happy birthday to Elena. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Oh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hi. Hello. Oh, hi. Cheers. I think everybody might have me prepared marks. But, but who needs them, right? We're not fun. And, um, I can't say too much more than my brother Jeff said. Um, you know, 1992 is when we got here. Um, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. Hi, Brian and Dana. Can you speak up just a little louder? Yeah. Can you hear me, Dana? Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, uh, so 1992, it's been a while since we got here. And um, my mom started a, a brand new life here and the community. She built, a, she built a new knot in life um, around the senior center and all the people that she met and the dancing. And it was a, a, a brand new chapter. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Get it, Bray. Do it right. There you go. Is that, is that better? started a brand new life here in 1992 and um, it, it flourished immediately and she was welcomed and she met so many friends and, and a new lifestyle with light dancing and the community center and, and all of the people. It was uh, really amazing. 
amazing. Um, and it was it was good for me and Jeff to see that happen because we didn't live here. You know, we're a bit away. And she made her own thing happen here again. So, thank you. No, no, so, so that's the best thing for, for, for us, is that we know that she is so well taken care of here. And, um, like I said, thank you for all of that. grandchild. Um, my two sisters, Caroline and Catherine, could not be here tonight. Caroline just had a baby, who you see on an every napkin in the room. <laughs> so thank you to Caroline and Lisa, my mother, for that. Um, and then there's Catherine, who is living in London right now, so she couldn't quite make the trip, but they both really wish they could have been here. Um, and they're so excited to celebrate, you know, Grandma's 90th birthday from afar. Um, I also wanted to say thank you everyone for coming. It's astounding that there's, I think the final count from Sonia was 115 people. Um, I just turned 34 in June, and there were three people in attendance at my party. <laughs> and one came was my boyfriend, so only two people came with their own free will. But we still have a great time. <laughs> this is a little more exciting, I will say. Um, I think the crowd here highlights, and, and both my dad and my uncle already said this, I promise we didn't coordinate on our speeches, um, but it highlights one of the most amazing things about my grandma, which is that she's always been able to cultivate this beautiful, large, familial community around her. And me and my sisters got to experience that firsthand every time we came out here as grandkids. Um, getting to run around with hordes of second cousins, like Carly, who I just reconnected with. Um, but there were so many of them, and it was the best. And Fresno was a paradise for us to visit as children. Um, so it's so fun for me to be back here tonight to celebrate. Um, I think a huge part of why she's able to maintain this beautiful and vibrant community is because of her generosity. And I think we could all agree with that. And I'm even going to I was talking to Daniel and Emily, whose family lives across the street from her, and they were even just in casual conversation, there you guys are, telling me about how she is so giving um, with jam and, and with her time. I mean, you guys had a laundry list, and it was beautiful to hear from, from your experiences being with her since we're so far away. But for me, um, when I think about how my grandma is giving, I think of her stories about giving all her time at the community center, the senior center, all the time she spends with the dancers. She goes every day, still to this day, even though she's not necessarily on the line dance floor anymore. And it's just a beautiful thing to see her so committed to being here to support and be a part of this community um, in that way. Also, she's generous with her sense of humor. Um, and if you listen, you'll notice that she has a witty response to almost everything anyone has to say. So pay attention, because I think she's hilarious, but it's a little, you have to look out for it. So that you wear um, That's very sophisticated. And of course, she's generous with her fruit leather. Have you tasted her fruit leather? This was, that deserves some applause. This was like the ultimate dream 
for me and my sister is coming to Fresno as kids, is getting to have fruit leather. And literally one time I came here and I ate so much fruit leather. Uh, I think I think you guys were traveling, so Grandma was babysitting us for a couple days, because this wouldn't have happened otherwise. But I ate so much fruit leather, and Grandma found out how much fruit leather I ate, and she got very solemn. And she looked at me and she said, "You've spoiled your dinner." <laughs> and I was ecstatic. <laughs> I was ecstatic because I had heard a million times from my own parents about spoiling my dinner, but. They would always stop me before I had the chance to actually spoil my dinner. So to have actually spoiled my dinner with grandma felt like some sort of scientific breakthrough or something. It was very exciting for me. Um, and courted my memories of her, so definitely fruit leather. But I think of all the things that she does and all the ways that she gives, the one that sticks out to me the most to this day is her hat making which she's literally made 5,000 hats, maybe, to this day. And she's, she was churning one out this afternoon when we were hanging out at the house before the party. So she does not stop. Um, and it's beautiful. And she every year she asks me if I need another hat, which I think is so funny, because every year she sends me about five hats. But every year there's always a new color or something exciting about one of the hats that I find myself drawn to. And so I keep it for myself. But I also, she always tells me to, you know, if I don't want them, give them away. And if you ever, if anyone comes to New York in the winter time, you will see, you will see people walking around the streets in a lanager of hats. I promise you. I mean, I can't tell you how many of them are. So, from place to place. It's really, it's really beautiful. And um, I actually, she taught me to knit when I was a young child. And I, I did it for fun for a few years. Never did anything that successfully, but I enjoyed the process. And I picked it back up during the pandemic. And I also picked up some crocheting. And I thought for grandma's 90th birthday, since she's made so many hats for so many people, it would be appropriate for somebody to make a hat for her. And this is a work in progress. But her birthday's not until November, so it will be done in time. But here's her hat. Or the beginnings of her hat. It's the same shade of pink as her shirt, which I also yes. didn't plan. Um, but it works out well. So Grandma, we can try this on and make sure it fits you so far at some point later in the night. And go from there. I'll have it to you by your birthday. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to present this and then highlight some of my favorite qualities about Grandma and say happy, happy, happy birthday. We're all so happy to be here and celebrating with you. Thank you for everything. I'm so happy to be here. Let's have another toast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.